King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer. The King told close family members, including his sons, Prince William and Prince Harry, and his three siblings. The announcement was made to the British public at 6pm this evening and shocked the world. Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, has told friends he's flying into the UK over the next few days to see his father, who he's already spoken to over the phone. The type of cancer has not been revealed, but we do know from the palace it is not prostate cancer. But the cancer was discovered during the King's recent treatment for an enlarged prostate. Well, Buckingham Palace said tonight that the King began regular treatments as an outpatient uh, on Monday. He was last seen publicly as recently as Sunday, attending church in Norfolk with his wife, Queen Camilla. He remains the head of state. He will undertake basic state duties from the palace, including his weekly meeting with the Prime Minister. But public engagements have all been postponed for the duration of his treatment. It's unclear if he'll be able to undertake major international trips to Canada and New Zealand planned over the coming months. Well, reaction, as you'd expect, is pouring in from around the world. Here, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Sakir Starmer have wished him a speedy recovery. In the United States, Donald Trump just posted, he's a wonderful man who I got to know well during my presidency, and we all pray that he has a fast and full recovery. President Joe Biden said he's concerned and hopes to talk to him soon. Yes, I'm concerned about him. Just heard his diagnosis, but I'll be talking to him, God willing. Well, joining me now is Talk TV's royal editor Sarah Houston, royal biographer Tom Bauer, Fox News contributor Mark Siegel, and former editor of the Sunday Times Andrew Neal. Okay, well, Sarah, let's start with you just on this breaking news. Yeah. I got told just after five o'clock there's a massive statement coming from Buckingham Palace about King Charles, and we think it's cancer. Uh, and I read the statement maybe just a few minutes before it, it went out. It was shocking. I mean, you don't read this kind of thing about a senior member of the royal family, and yet it comes just after <coughs> the previous health statements about both Charles having his, uh, his uh, prostate operation, which was for a benign situation, and for Kate, the Princess of Wales. A lot of health stories about the royals. This is... It appears to be by far the most serious. Yes, and you're right. It, it has come as a shock because we know the king went into hospital for a planned procedure on uh, an enlarged prostate, a benign uh, enlarged prostate, we were told. We thought that that was very typical for a man of his age, and we were told that he'd put that diagnosis out there because he wanted to raise awareness. Mm. He did have to stay in hospital a little bit longer than we had initially mm. thought. He was in for three nights. He had regular visits from Queen Camilla during that period, and it was during that procedure that an area of concern was noticed. Some well, actually, I wonder about the timing, out. because I'm told by people close to, to the royals that as, as, as late as, like, two days ago, yesterday, everything seemed fine. And it seems to me what may be more likely, and maybe Dr Mark Siegel can tell us this, is that they took some of his prostate away for further examination in that operation he had, and then something nasty turned up, which was nothing to do with a prostate, but it revealed another cancer in his body. And I think that this has come as a shock to everybody. From what I can tell, even senior member of the royal family had no idea this was coming. Absolutely. And we saw the King and the Queen uh, at Sandringham yesterday. Uh, we do understand that they knew last week. Mm. Uh, Queen Camilla uh, uh, opened a Maggie's Cancer Care Centre and we're told that she did that knowing the diagnosis. We think, we, we think that she told knew that. by that point. We, uh, my understanding is that she carried on with that engagement and it will have taken on an added significance, of course, uh, for her. We know that the King told his siblings, uh, Anne, Edward but and when? Drew. We don't know, but before this was made public, and yeah, I think spoke to all... both sons. OK, so, Tom, I think this has all happened pretty quickly, and that says to me this has come as a big shock, mm. uh, and that the royal family already reeling from the deaths of Prince Philip, from Her Majesty the Queen, from the double health blow that we had uh, several weeks ago of Charles and, and Kate, and now this, that our new monarch has cancer. Well, it does come as a shock, but on the other hand, I must tell you that before Christmas, someone, a neighbour of his in Highgrove, did tell me that the King wasn't well and also warned that C Queen Camilla is not perfect health either. So I think that, although it seems like it's a great shock tonight to us, I think this has been coming for some time. Well, uh, let's bring in Andrew Neil. Uh, Andrew, you were one of the great newspaper editors. This is one of those stories, isn't it, where it breaks at 6 o'clock at night and everyone is scrambling. I'd imagine the papers will be absolutely full of this 
tomorrow. What do you what do you make of this? In particular, the wording of the Palace statement, which I I got to say, with my own former newspaper editor hat on, I think this looks quite a serious situation. Well, they told us more than they usually do in these circumstances. They haven't told us anything like the full picture. We don't know what kind of cancer it is, but they told us more than they usually do. They told us more than they did when the Queen was uh, getting seriously unwell. It is a, a huge story. I've been watching the American network. It's the lead story in every American news network tonight. I've been watching French and German TV. It's the lead story there as well. It's the lead story in every major network, I would guess, uh, around the world. And there will be a temptation for journalists uh, to make Harry the story because he's now going to be flying back. And we hope that uh, at times of crisis, or this is a crisis for the royal family, it can bring families together. But I hope we don't make Harry the story. The story is the king. Yeah. And the story is the queen and Prince William uh, and his wife, Kate, who will have to step up to the plate, particularly when Kate gets better, to fill in uh, some of the gaps that Charles will leave behind. The important matter is the continuity of the British state in these circumstances. And the core of the British state has a thousand years of experience in dealing with these things. Not many countries that can say they've got a thousand years of experience. And I'm encouraged by the fact that the king will still carry out a lot of functions in private, including the Privy Council and meeting the Prime Minister and his red boxes, but it's not been thought necessary to create a council of state that would take over the functions, the constitutional functions of the monarch. And I think when you add all that together, that's encouraging. The continuity will continue. And it's very important, Piers, in an election year. Yes. Because the purpose of the monarchy is to provide continuity and stability, regardless of what's happening in politics. Yeah. And we're having an election this year, and it's very important that the monarchy plays that role above politics for the country as a whole. Yeah, very, very good point, Andrew. We've got Roy Nicker, who's the royal correspondent for the Sunday Times, Andrew's old paper. Before I come to you, uh, Roy, I want to read the Buckingham Palace statement in full and then get your reaction to this. It says, during the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced to schedule regular treatments, during which time he's been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly pos positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist public understanding for all those around the world affected by cancer. So, Roya, I mean, that was a bombshell statement. And as always with royal statements, you kind of look for the, the devil in the detail, if you like. And I've got to say, I'd, like I said, I think this is a, quite a serious situation, which has emerged from a not-so-serious situation, which was the uh, procedure for the benign prostate enlargement. This is clearly a separate and, and is a cancer. So it's, two, it's a different thing altogether, and it's more serious. You can't, Piers, um, detract from the fact that cancer is a very serious diagnosis, whatever form it is, and we don't know what form it is yet. Um, we're told, you know, he, he may choose to share more uh, information down the line during his treatment. But just to your point about, uh, you know, always unpicking statements from the palace, I have to say, I actually looked at the, that statement and some of the guidance that we've had tonight, some background guidance we've had from um, the palace, particularly the items about no councillors of state being needed. So we are not going to see Prince William or Prince Edward or Anne stepping in constitutionally for the king. It's been made very clear, quite sort of firmly, that constitutionally at the moment nothing has changed. The king is going to keep doing his affairs of state, his red boxes. We just won't see him in public so much. So, yes, it's very serious he's got cancer. But at the same time, that phrase, you know, he is wholly positive about his treatment and that he's still doing affairs of state, I read that as actually quite a hopeful sign. Yeah, but for a new king of less than a year to no longer be doing any engagements in front of the public, I, I just think, you know, knowing Charles uh, as I have for a long time, not, not particularly closely, but having followed his, his life, this is a tough guy, a very fit guy, 
used to yomping around the highlands and leading a very fit, active life. For him to basically retreat from public life in the way that he is, yes, he may be saying he's wholly positive. I wouldn't expect anything else. But I, I, I think this must be a serious situation because he, he, he's cancelling all public engagements, apparently, while he undergoes this treatment. I mean, there's no doubt that, you know, cancer is serious for anyone. But I think in terms of sort of retreating from public view, when, you know, depending on what his treatment involves, the palace and the royal family and the king himself will want to minimise, you know, the health risk to him in terms of... It, it's one thing to meet with the prime minister and have an audience with him, as we're told, hopefully he will continue to do that and meet with the Privy Council. It's, a, it's another thing to, you know, be at a, a Buckingham Palace reception with 300 people in the room, which I think is why, you know, erring on the side of caution for the head of state, for our monarch, he's with, withdrawn. But of course, you know, you, you cannot shy away from the fact that the king, as you say, just a year and a half into his reign, is having to withdraw from public life, temporarily, we hope, is a huge blow to him, a huge blow to his reign. And it's going to be a big challenge for him and the family to rally round. Yeah. Uh, Tom, the subplot here, um, and Andrew Neil was quite right, this shouldn't be the story, but it's interesting that there's obviously this massive ongoing rift with Prince Harry and his father, but we've been told from friends of Prince Harry that he's planning to fly from California to see his father, which will be the nearest thing to a rapprochement we've seen. You do see this with families when they're warring, is a dramatic event like this. Uh, can bring people together. What do you make of that? Well, I think that uh, rapprochement is fitting. On the other hand, I'm very suspicious uh, because, we, as we've discussed often here, um, Harry's agenda has been so anti-monarchist, has been so disrespectful of the king and the queen and, of course, of his brother, that uh, for him suddenly to turn up in London, not having expressed any uh, concern for his father when he heard originally about the prostrate problem, which is two weeks ago, uh, that's been a period of silence. So suddenly he's flying in. I think it seems two things, not the rapprochement only, but also how serious it is. I don't think it is a benign issue at all. I think you're quite right that there is a, there is a mini crisis happening. Yeah, and Andrew Neil, if I could come back to you uh, for a moment. You know, we've covered the royals for many, many decades and they've always been the biggest story in town. And like you say, the news of the king's diagnosis is leading the news around the world, not least in America, um, where it's huge. I've had loads of calls from people wanting interviews about this already. So you can see, you can see how big a story this is. But does it also point to the fragility of our royal family right now? We've lost the great matriarch in the queen. We lost the great patriarch in Prince Philip. We've now got the Princess of Wales, who's having months off uh, work because of... Uh, we don't know what, what it was that she had, but it was obviously pretty serious. Uh, we've got Charles now, the new monarch who has cancer. You know, if you look at the sort of top... the top list of royals, this is a, this is a big moment, isn't it? I mean, this is a... a like I say, this, this points to the fragility of the whole thing. It's come at a bad time. Of course, cancer diagnosis has never come at a good time, but it, it, with the royal family, we've gone from a surplus to famine uh, very, very quickly. I mean, a lot of people who say, I don't mind uh, the king or the queen, I don't mind the very top royals, but I don't like all these hangers-on. Well, a lot of the so-called, my mother used to call them hangers-on. Well, these kind of royals seem to have stopped hanging on. They've disappeared now. Prince Andrew's no longer in, in the game. Prince Harry counted himself out along uh, with Meghan. Uh, the Princess of Wales has not been well, so William has refused himself uh, too. We are now uh, have a royal family that is pretty short-handed. Tessa, let's talk about uh, the inevitable. Harry's flown in. Uh, he had a 40-minute maximum meeting with his father. That might be it. We don't know. Maybe he flies back again. Um, no sign of any rapprochement with his brother. I mean, what do you make of this? Um, I think that Harry's been itching to build bridges with his father, really from the, the birthday call at the back end of last year. I think the Omid Scobie book scuppered any bridges being built before Christmas. And I think that Harry, as quick as he was out of the traps, <clears throat> is indicative of a son who wants to find a way back in, certainly with his father, against whom he's never really had the beef. The beef was always predominantly... Well, he did attack his father's his wife in his book. Yeah, for I mean, sure. I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't pretty, and I'm pretty sure... Pretty, as ugly as it gets. I mean, if one of my family did to me, they would be done. I mean, Tom, we've talked a lot about this, but what do you make of this, this grandiose gesture? I mean, I wonder if we could say, well, it shows it must be a serious situation, because he didn't fly two weeks ago when 
Charles had his benign prostate uh, procedure, but he's flown straight in here. That does suggest to me it must be serious, but this rift with William looks pretty implacable. If you can't come together at a moment like this, when can you? Well, I, as I said last night to you, I was very suspicious about the dash, mm -hmm. and I won't be surprised at all, as I hinted yesterday, if he flies back tonight or tomorrow. I think it was all just for show. I think that it was an impromptu way of getting attention. I think he's a very suspicious man. He's wrote his book for money. He's been very disloyal. And I'd be very surprised if he met Camilla when he met the father, when mm. he met the father. And I think the only person he might meet but now would be uh, Beatrice or Eugenie, mm. but otherwise he'll go back. And I think that there's absolutely no hint of reconciliation. His wife is the most bitter, unreconciled woman there is. He'll be told that, in any case, there's no future for him. And I'm told that William's real rage is about what Harry wrote about his... And he's right, but he's absolutely right. Yeah, he is. What he wrote was absolutely grotesque. Yeah. Only for money. Yeah. And, and he's been terrible about his father as well. I but mean, I don't think we, we should be too suspicious about a son wanting to have contact with his ageing, ill father. I think that is a, a very simple, familial transaction, whatever water's gone under the bridge. I think it's all too easy to cast dispersions, and one hopes that Charles is, is well, larger-hearted the dispersions are cast that. because of the track record of Harry and his wife in the last four, he five years. He dashed off after the coronation. He was pretty un... un but they have a um, missed well, chance to sell... He's made mistakes. ..to sell trash about their family. And Let's not only that, he's, he briefed Ermit Scobie for the second book, which was a disgraceful book. We discussed that at the time. Uh, totally but, he, he wouldn't... He, he would have uh, got it in the neck if he hadn't come. I mean, yes, you said earlier, true. you know, damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. I think... Um, the, 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 the jury stays out until we see how, uh, you know, this, this trip is over. Does he use it as an opportunity to grandstand, or is what it really...? What does the King really feel about this situation with Harry and also about the situation between his two sons? Uh, with Harry, its door is always open territory. It's, it's, he is forgiving. He is not one to, to feud on this. I think he'd much rather uh, take a... Mm. A, a, a bit of a hit and, 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 and have a, a much more normal relationship. When it comes to the, the brothers, I think it, he, he views it as, look, I, it, that's for William. I can't sort of step in here. He'd what love about to see Camilla, it. Camilla in all this? Because she's had to step up now, not just with the duties she's performing, may take on some of the kings, but also this is the love of her life who is facing this enormous personal health challenge. Sure, but as you know, Piers, Camilla's a, a broad-shouldered woman. She's a mother herself. Things get complicated. We know that Harry retreated into his bedroom. He well, I'm really talking to you actually about Char but, her, her feelings about what's going on mm. with Charles. Oh, uh, well, right. Well, I think what's interesting about Camilla is the way in which she's risen to the occasion. She's had these solo events. She looks impeccable. You doesn't even look like she's having this sort of personal storm going on in her private life. And I think that this will reframe her in many ways. And it will also, I think, help set the tone for Harry's re-entry. They all... Those two, they're mature adults, Camilla and Charles. They want this... Well, to Tom, one thing's better. for sure. They will know better than anybody that you can be very disliked by the British public and bring things back. Yeah. They're both massively more popular, Charles and Camilla, than they were in the aftermath of Diana's but death. You're... joined now from the United States by Dr Mark Siegel. He's a Fox News contributor. Uh, Dr Mark, great to see you. Um, big bombshell news tonight. I know it's making big news across the pond in America. Um, when you read the statement from the palace, and it says it, it, when he had the procedure for the benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted, which is another form of cancer has been identified. Um, just talk me through the process that could have led to that discovery. Well, Piers, uh, good, uh, good to see you. And uh, we actually talked together about this at the very beginning when he went in for the procedure. Now, I talked to our top urologist at NYU, New York University today, about this issue with the prostate, and he said about one out of 100 times, when you're there, when you're going in, you could see a bladder cancer, that it could look like enlarged prostate, or it could be there at the same time as enlarged prostate, or it could come out on a pathology. One out of 100 times or more that happens. I'll tell you, Piers, I'm suspicious that this is bladder cancer because he went home, because they're treating him as an outpatient. Because what you do with bladder cancer after you resect it, if you can resect it, you give BCG, which is a form of inactivated bacteria like tuberculosis, you infuse that into the bladder, and it cures it 
over 90% of the time. It's the fourth most common cancer in men. Number two, uh, number one is prostate cancer, which they say this is not. Lung cancer, colon cancer, they, those could have spread. But the king of England, I think, would be getting inpatient treatment for those. So I'm suspicious that this is bladder cancer, and that would be good news. Well, that's encouraging if that's what it is. We've been asked not to speculate about what it is, but it's impossible, really, given that we know the king has cancer, not to at least theorise what the range of cancers it could be, given that it was discovered from this uh, procedure for the benign prostate enlargement. I mean, so I heard a doctor this morning, uh, this, this evening, on the radio, talking about how when you have that benign prostate enlargement, if you are the king, they probably took some tissue from the prostate area as well, and that it may have taken some time for that to be properly tested and come back. Would that be consistent with a bladder cancer discovery? And could it also have unearthed something else completely different? In other words, like you say, could it have been a secondary site uh, for a lung cancer or colon cancer or something of that nature? Absolutely. All of those things are possible. I'm just cons considering the idea that he went home. And, and as you say... They ask us not to speculate, but if I'm right, this is very, very, very good news. This also happens pretty commonly. And also, they didn't talk about a CAT scan or other tests. You know, this is, this is most likely something you would find while you're doing the other procedure. So you would be quietly encouraged by the sequence of events? Because he went home. Because the King of England went home. And because if they found this... Now, another possibility might be lymphoma. L lymphoma is eminently treatable as well. But again, I would have expected the king to be treated in the hospital for that, at least initially. So the fact that I'm he... encouraged by the fact that he went home yeah. and that he's getting the treatment as an outpatient. Right. I find I that very encouraging. That seems to me to be a significant part of this. I mean, we, we know that was the case on Monday. What we don't know from that statement is whether he will remain an outpatient or whether he will actually have to go in as well. All we do know is that all public engagements involving FaceTime with the public have all been cancelled or postponed. Uh, that is very, very unusual, Dr. Mark, which suggests to me that whatever it is, they're very worried about it. Well, or that he has a recovery time here or that he had surgery done. You know, if it was, if it was bladder cancer, they would have tried to remove it at the time that they were doing the prostate. If it's metastatic cancer of another sort, it still can respond to chemotherapy or immunotherapy or radiation, but it would be more dire in that, than if it were the bladder. What do you, I mean, if it is the bladder cancer, and as you say, if he's had the procedure that you said he may have had for that, what's the recovery time period like? Well, that would be a, a matter of weeks. Of course, he's 75 years old, that factors into it. He's in pretty, pretty fit. And as yeah. you know, Piers, he's the anti-smoking king. He's been, mm. he's been asking for no smoking in all of the UK. So that's good because, because more likely these cancers are related to smoking. So, so he's a healthy king. And, and I, I think that that bodes well for a faster recovery unless he has a more severe cancer. Right. Uh, Dr. Mark, as always, great to talk to you. Thank you so much for sparing the time. I know